The best photos of space are taken in colour. So why do astronomers use black and white cameras? Why does NASA use black and white cameras? Can't NASA afford a colour camera? And why am I standing in a basketball court like some kind of jock? My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. I thought that would... Almost every colour image you see today is a sacrifice in quality. That's because our screens and even our printed photos on billboards or magazines are not actually showing us a pixel of a single colour, but typically a combination of three, red, green and blue. But you already know this, and it's easy to see under a microscope. It's so small, it's an acceptable sacrifice. Our eyes see the pixels overall colour in aggregate. The same is true for capturing colour or rather, capturing photons with slightly different energies that we perceive as colour. Imagine this basketball court is a camera chip with one pixel, the net. If the ball, a photon, makes it through the net, the chip records a value of 1. It would be the worst camera in the world, with a quantum efficiency of almost 0%, because there's so much caught in one little net. That means if we threw a hundred basketballs from the sky, we'd be lucky to get one in. So, of course, the solution is more nets. Now, if we throw a hundred balls from the sky, our chances of our photon balls hitting a pixel is much higher. But it's still not 100% quantum efficiency. A lot of those balls are going to hit the rings and not the net, so they don't count. Depending on the spaces between the rings, our quantum efficiency goes up or down. The same is true with camera chips and manufacturers work really hard to make the gaps between the pixel wells, the nets, as small as possible. So far so good? Okay, so our basketball camera is getting better, but it's still black and white. It doesn't care if our photon balls are red or blue or green. If the ball goes through the net, the camera records the value and it goes from black to a little bit more white. Here's the problem. We haven't invented a net that can tell the difference between a blue ball or a red ball. That's no good, so how are we going to record colour unless we know? The solution which cameras use today are filters. Each pixel or net has a filter called a Bayer matrix. Blue balls get recorded by blue nets, red balls in red, green in green. But there's another problem, a grid. It doesn't divide into three. So the Bayer matrix gives green an extra net. I know, right? It's just not fair. If anything, it should be blue. Blue balls need attention. But it's green. Probably because nature has so much green or some hippy dippy crap like that. There isn't a lot of green in space though, so it seems a little unfair for us space photographers trying to capture every photon. And the extra pixel well we get is green. So now you can probably see the sacrifice we're making. For all the photons hitting the pixel wells on a colour camera, most of them are lost. A red photon, probably the most common emission from space, has at least 75% chance of missing its net. Same for blue, and green photons have a 50 chance of missing. That's a lot of photons going nowhere. On a monochrome black and white camera, apart from the gaps between the pixels, you're getting all the photons most of the time. That's why a monochrome image is quicker to expose with more signal instead of noise, and the detail is recorded across all pixels, not just every second or third one, so the image has more clarity. Anyway, I could go on about this forever, but I just wanted to explain this key fundamental concept for why mono cameras are so much better. That's why we need them for science. We can still turn those images from space into colour images by using filters, either as true representations or false colour narrowband. But the raw signal, the truth of the data, is closer when it's recorded on a monochrome sensor. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>